Hello again, Kevin Feige. It's me, Nando, the YouTuber who secretly writes all the Marvel movies and the shows now, like She-Hulk, which I love. Like, I'm, I'm so digging that show. I think it's so great. Congratulations to everybody who's working on it, which uh, again is me, because I secretly write all the movies and shows. Anyway, first, let me apologize for accidentally uploading the Spider-Man 4 pitch to my YouTube channel. It's confusing. You see, I saw the button labeled public had a green eye icon and you have green eyes. So I assumed that meant it would be public for people with green eyes. And how many of those are there in the world? Like 15, 20? So, you know, thought I was safe. Anyway, got your new letter. Dear Nando, it's me again, Kevin Feige. I wear a lot of hats. We're doing Secret Wars. Can you believe it? Anyway, pitch me a Thunderbolts movie. Okay, bye. And yeah, I can do that. I actually do have some ideas for a Thunderbolts movie that I am so excited to show you. And I know you guys are working on a Thunderbolts movie now. So I will send you this video and it will be completely secret. And you can announce all of it at the D23 convention. I am so excited and I will not make this one public again. And if I did, I guess you'd have to change all the things I said and just do a pretty different you know, movie with some of the same characters and maybe a similar plot line. So let's start with the question. What are the Thunderbolts? Like I know, and you know, but going over it helps set the stage for the pitch. In Marvel Comics, there are two things. You see, in the 1990s, there was a comic event called Onslaught that ended with a bunch of the superheroes being trapped in a pocket dimension, which left a literal and figurative power vacuum in the Marvel Universe. And then, this group of heroes called the Thunderbolts showed up, led by a character named Citizen V. And it turned out that the Thunderbolts were actually a group of supervillains, and Citizen V was none other than Baron Zemo. But the fun thing about the Thunderbolts is that the other villains masquerading as heroes realized, during their reign, that being a hero is better than being a villain, and some of them reformed. More recently, they've been turned into what is basically Marvel's Suicide Squad, a group of supervillains and anti-heroes that run Black Ops missions led by General Thunderbolt Ross. The Thunderbolts, like the Suicide Squad, have had a relatively fluid roster over the years, although there are a couple of mainstays. And I agree that now is the perfect time for a Thunderbolts movie, besides the fact that we are finally at the point in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where we have enough living villains to fill a roster, there also seems to be a shift away from movies focused on original heroes and towards other smaller stories in the MCU. So let's look at this pitch. First things first, I'm sure you're wondering, will we do the villains disguised as heroes Thunderbolts or the Marvel Suicide Squad Thunderbolts? Yes, I will explain everything as we go, trust me it will make sense. But I want to start this pitch, Mr. Feige, by showing you a scene from the movie. This is how I would open Thunderbolts. We open on the floating supervillain prison known as The Raft. Secretary Ross gets out of a helicopter. Since William Hurt died before he could film this, maybe we can see the back of his head, and then we recast him, like Bruce Greenwood or something. I don't know. We follow Ross through some hallways as he's briefed on the current inmates of The Raft. He passes Zemo, who's in his cell reading a book. Zemo is unfazed. And as Ross passes Zemo, an alarm goes off. We shift focus to Zemo, who gets worried as all the guards rush in one direction. And we hear something breaking out of the prison and defeating the guards one by one. Zemo tries to break free from his cell. He pulls out a phone that he's been hiding in his book and attempts to hack the locking mechanism. And suddenly, guards begin being thrown down this hallway. And Zemo sees three figures pass by. First is a seven foot tall metal man holding an unconscious Ross. And following them is Samuel Stearns, AKA the leader. Big forehead, green skin, the whole nine. And as Stearns is floating through the hallway, he makes eye contact with Zemo, who is concerned that this escape might kill him. Stearns attempts to telepathically attack Zemo, but Ross wakes and shoots Stearns. Stearns takes the shot and is distracted momentarily. The metal man knocks out Ross, Stearns heals from the shot, and they continue down the hallway, ignoring Zemo. Zemo manages to open his cell door using the phone, he can hack, whatever, and he tries to escape, but the only helicopter has just left with Stearns, Ross, and the metal man. As the three are leaving, Stearns telekinetically damages the doors on the roof so they can't fully close. How do we know he did that? Head on hand and Kirby crackle, but now that they're out, the base is starting to sink, and the sunroof is open. Zemo rushes through the base, looking for a way to turn off the mechanism that lowers the base underwater. He passes a few familiar faces, Ghost, some She-Hulk villains, a Frost Giant. He steals keycards from a bunch of unconscious guards before getting to the control room, which was partially destroyed. 
He can see through a window made of bulletproof glass that some of the terminals still seem to be working, but that won't be of much use since everyone inside the room is knocked out and the door is blocked by heavy debris. Then Zemo remembers Ghost and realizes she can be useful. She is also worried about what's going on. Zemo hacks through her cell the same way he broke through his, which deactivates some sort of field, keeping her from phasing, and Ghost escapes. Zemo explains what's happening. The raft is sinking. What? We're in the middle of the ocean and we're all going to die unless you get me into that room. What are you going to do? I need to get to the controls and raise the base. Okay. And Ghost phases through the door and goes to the computer. She begins to search through the control programs. Zemo screams, You need to let me in! I can do this myself. No, you can't. Ghost ignores Zemo. Zemo goes back to some of the unconscious guards and finds a gun. As he gets to the guards, he realizes some of the base is already filling with water. The prisoners realize too and ask Zemo to free them. Zemo ignores the prisoners, takes the gun, and attempts to use it to break through the bulletproof glass. But glass is bulletproof, so it doesn't work. Zemo yells again, we're still sinking, not helping. Zemo tries to find something he can use to pry the door open finds an axe, wedges it between the door, and starts to push. Zemo is straining, the water is rising, the other prisoners are panicking, and he's not having any luck. Zemo screams to Ghost, You're out of time! You have doomed us all! Shut up! Zemo keeps trying to open the door. The water is starting to really rush through. Tension, tension, tension. Zemo goes into his pocket and pulls out a picture of his family, ready to look at it one last time before he drowns. And then, the base stops, and it begins to rise. The water drains. Zemo looks to Ghost, who successfully managed to save everyone. She gives him a look. Ghost phases out of the room and back into the hallway with Zemo. You were saying? Zemo points the gun at Ghost. You should have helped me get into the room. We all could have died. What are you talking about? I saved us. But what if you failed? I didn't. You're all useless. We all? Metahumans can't take orders. Think you're all superior. Well, I'm the one who saved your life, so maybe I am. At that moment, the guards begin waking up and find Zemo and Ghost out of their cells. The guards surround them and both villains surrender. Next scene. Val is watching a recording of the incident. She talks to a politician. I didn't even know Stearns was alive. What's well, classified? Classified? I'm a United States Senator. And yet, he was classified. It didn't look like that before. It seems the gamma infection from Banner's blood transformed Stearns into this. He also has telepathy and telekinesis and the ability to heal quickly. And no one knew. It was undetectable. Apparently, he was telepathically communicating with Creel, planning the escape. But why now? They must have been waiting until Secretary Ross was on the base. And they only took Ross. That's what it looks like. Do we have any idea where they're taking it? We're not sure, but I do have a guess, which is classified. <sighs> what do you need? I need a team. You want your own Avengers? Val looks at the recording now paused on Zemo holding the gun to Ghost. No, this requires something different. What do you have in mind? Title card just like the original Avengers, Thunderbolts. So that's your premise. In case, Kevin, you have not seen Incredible Hulk in a while, because it's the one that's not on Disney+, Plus, along with the Spider-Mans, Samuel Stearns was a scientist who was working with Bruce Banner to find a cure for Banner's condition. After meeting Banner, Stearns attempted to duplicate the process on Emil Blonsky and created the Abomination. In the process, Stern was accidentally infected with Blonsky's blood and he went into a coma. There is some backstory in the Fury's Big Week comic, but I don't think that's canon anymore. In this version of the story, Concerned that Stearns may have gained abilities as a result of the accident, at the time General Ross had Stearns imprisoned on the raft. While imprisoned and still in the coma, Stearns' head doubled in size and his skin turned green. He never showed any signs of improvement. Until one day, Stearns woke up and orchestrated a breakout on the raft. He'd apparently been coordinating the breakout telepathically with one of the other inmates named Carl Creel who goes by the codename Absorbing Man. We can learn in Loki Season 2 that decades ago, Loki poisoned a man from Earth with a serum that gave him the ability to absorb whatever he touches. Creel was in suspended animation since any material used to imprison him could also be something he could absorb and use to escape, so he was in a medically induced coma until a cure for his condition could be found. So Kevin, I bet you're saying to yourself, wait a second, the bad guy for this pitch is the leader? That is a genius move, but something like that might already be happening. It's unclear who is pulling the strings on She-Hulk, but 
Sturden certainly seems like someone who could be the big bad. I mean, you, Kevin Feige, know, but you can't tell me. Even though I, I wrote She-Hulk, so I should know too. Like I said, the I, I wrote the I wrote the She-Hulk, so you know, whatever. Well, first off, I'm not convinced that the She-Hulk bad guy is Stearns. It makes way more sense to me if it's someone like General Ross, because not to spoil the show, and I I don't know this, but like his whole thing is trying to steal Hulk blood, and that's what ends up turning him into Red Hulk, kind of. Or it could be the power broker, since she loves to broker power, or Skrulls, or Val, or Modok. So it could be any of those characters, but you know, Stearns is possible. But Kevin, this is not a prediction as much as it's just my ideal Thunderbolt story. You'll see why it can pretty much only be Stearns by the time you get to the end of this pitch. But yes, I am aware that Stearns may show up in something soon that makes the pitch not line up timeline wise, but if that's the case, who cares? We'll retcon it away in a few years anyway. You may also be wondering, why is Ghost in jail? She did not used to be in jail. Well, in Ant-Man and the Wasp, she was still a fugitive, so I guess in this timeline, she got caught and brought to jail for a crime she committed in the past. Simple enough. So what does Val do next? She gets her thunderbolts. Zemo is sitting in his jail cell reading a book. He is approached by Val. Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. To what do I owe the pleasure? Am I getting a medal? You're lucky we didn't take that phone away. I might need it. You never know when another one of your metahumans is going to break out and I'm going to need to fix your mess. Funny, I heard it was Ghost who saved everyone. Is there something you want? I want to offer you your freedom. In exchange for? All you need to do is lead a team to stop Stearns and save Ross. Oh, that's all. I don't know if you saw the tapes, but that's a little above my weight class. Well, lucky for you, we have some heavyweights of our own. A team specifically designed to stop Stearns. You mean metahumans? No, thank you. You're scared? I've dealt with too many of them, and every time, disaster. They cannot be controlled. Yeah, but if you aim them in the right direction, you can get a lot done. And sure, you may lose a few in the process, but that's a sacrifice I think you're willing to make. They're expendable. Hmm, means the team is made of other prisoners. What could be so valuable? that you would risk freeing a terrorist and a team of super criminals. That is not your concern. All you need to do is intercept Stearns and Creel and save Ross and you're a free man. How do I know I can trust you? Well, I don't think you have a choice. Unless you have other offers. I have plenty of reading to catch up on. Then please don't let me keep you. However, it should be obvious that this is time sensitive. My helicopter leaves in 10 minutes. Why me? You're capable? Resourceful? A leader? I believe you are one of the few people on the planet that can catch them. And I know you're willing to do what's necessary if it comes to it. Or if it doesn't. Isn't this the type of problem that your Avengers would solve? And there are no Avengers. Tony Stark is dead. The Vision is dead. Black Widow is dead. T'Challa, dead. Scarlet Witch, missing, probably dead. Steve Rogers disappeared, Thor is gone, Carol Danvers is gone. We're down to a bunch of wizards nobody can find and a couple of free agents like your friend Sam. What about Banner? I hear he has a cousin now. This particular mission requires discretion. Not exactly Banner's strong suit, plus we don't see eye to eye. You know the damage these superhumans can do. The danger they represent. I understand why you did what you did. And I believe these two, Stearns and Creel, represent an existential threat to the human race. If you're the man I think you are, you'll want to stop them. Before they create another Sokovia, Val begins to leave. This is the part where you ask me who's on the team. Well, you already know John Walker, that buffoon, that super strong and loyal buffoon. Then we've got your friend Miss Star, a black widow, a billionaire weapons expert, a mechanical genius, a woman with a voice that can bend steel, and a tank. Well, where are we going? We are not going anywhere. I'm dropping you and your new teammates off as close as I can to their location, and you're going to do the rest. I'm assuming you know where to find them. Their destination is an abandoned shield base somewhere in Mexico. We've lost their trail, but that's where they're going. Your mission is to find it, kill Stearns and Creel, and get out. Ideally with Ross, if he's still alive. So I want to describe my ideal roster by answering these three questions about each character. Who are they? What can they do? Why are they on the team? Who are they? 
Helmut Zemo was a commander of the Sokovian Special Forces whose family was killed during the Battle of Sokovia. He blamed the Avengers for the death of his family and successfully put together and executed a plan to disassemble the Avengers that involved bombing the United Nations. He is currently imprisoned in the raft. What can they do? Zemo is a brilliant strategist because of his years of fencing as a child, Zemo is especially skilled with the sword. Zemo is also an excellent leader. Why are they on the team? Val needs someone on the Thunderbolts who can command the team in the field, since Val cannot interact with the Thunderbolts during their mission. In exchange for his cooperation, Val has offered Zemo a full pardon. Who are they? Ava Star, aka Ghost, was in an accident as a child and gained the ability to phase through solid objects. She suffered from chronic pain as a result of the accident and spent her life working for S.H.I.E.L.D. as an assassin while they worked on a cure for her condition. She was abandoned by S.H.I.E.L.D. and forced to try to find her own cure with her surrogate father, Bill Foster, which led to the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp. What can they do? Ghost is a master spy with the ability to walk through walls. As a result of the intervention of Janet Van Dyne, her condition was stabilized and she had even more control of her abilities. Why are they on the team? While Ghost was cleared of US crimes, when S.H.I.E.L.D. fell and it was revealed that she was working for HYDRA, Ghost still committed numerous overseas actions that have turned her into an international fugitive. Val has managed to negotiate some sort of complete pardon in exchange for her working with the Thunderbolts. Who are they? Justin Hammer was a weapons manufacturer who considered himself a rival to Tony Stark. He worked heavily with the government, especially after Stark Industries stopped manufacturing weapons. He was always jealous of Tony Stark, and Hammer worked with terrorist Ivan Vanko to destroy Tony Stark. Ivan betrayed Hammer, and Hammer ended up in Seagate Prison. Hammer served five years before accepting a plea deal. In exchange for his freedom, Hammer flipped on several other industrialists involved in various federal crimes. He is currently a free man. What can they do? Hammer is a billionaire, although the extent of his actual wealth is questionable. He also owns Hammer Industries, which does some work with the government, but is mostly pivoted to creating consumer electronics. Hammer has also been working on a new mech suit to rival Iron Man's, although it is unlikely that it actually works. Why are they on the team? Justin Hammer wants to be the next Tony Stark and sees this new team as an opportunity to prove himself. Val wants Hammer on the team because Val needs an independent source of funding since the mission is off the books and she knows Hammer desperately wants to be on a team of superhumans. Who are they? Melissa Gold aka Screaming Mimi was a member of a group of superpowered female wrestlers called the Grapplers. When the group fell on hard times, the Grapplers became small time crooks and were eventually apprehended by the new Avengers led by Black Widow and brought to the raft, a prison for superpowered individuals. What did they do? Gold has the ability to create a supersonic scream. It can be used as a concussive blast and also gives her the ability to disorient people who hear it. Why are they on the team? Gold is sentenced to a few more years in the raft and Val has offered her a full pardon. Who are they? Eric Jostin was a Marine who, on a mission to somewhere, could be Sokovia, could be Latveria, was exposed to a dangerous amount of ionic radiation that altered his cellular chemistry and gave Jostin the ability to alter his height and density at will. The military declared Jostin dead and Jostin worked with the military and closely with General Ross to study his abilities. Eric voluntarily has not left the military base he's on for five years because he's worried his abilities will make him a danger to the people around him. What can he do? Jostin can grow to sizes around 30 feet at will. When Jostin grows, he becomes incredibly strong and durable. Jostin cannot shrink beyond his normal size. Why are they on the team? Jostin believes this mission will finally give him the opportunity to use his abilities for good. He also trusts General Ross, who has legitimately been trying to help him figure out how to cure his condition. So he wants to save Ross. Who are they? Phineas Mason was a member of Adrian Toomes' construction company. When the group's contract was revoked and the team turned to a life of crime, Mason went on to work with the Scavengers as their chief engineer. Mason built weapons for various criminal organizations and after Toomes' heist of the Stark plane was foiled by Spider-Man, Mason was arrested and imprisoned on the raft. What did they do? Mason is a genius inventor with the ability to create weapons and devices for any situation. Why are they on the team? Mason was recruited by Val to support the team by creating weapons and everything else the team needs to complete their mission. In exchange for his cooperation, Mason was offered a full pardon. Who are they? Yelena Belova is a graduate of the Red Room who operated as a Black Widow agent for an unspecified amount of time. After an intervention from Natasha, the original reformed Black Widow, Yelena was recruited by General Ross and then Val to complete various missions for the government. Val told Yelena that Clint Barton got Natasha killed 
and Yelena tracked down Clint looking for revenge. She learned that Clint did not actually kill Natasha, and that's the last we saw of her. What did they do? Yelena has the standard Black Widow skill set. She's a master of spycraft, stealth, hand to hand combat, marksmanship, and can slam a baton into a helicopter. Why are they on the team? Yelena is the obvious choice as the only team member who has worked for Val in the past. She does the mission for money, but also, she is suspicious of Val's motives after the Hawkeye incident. Yelena assumes Val is manipulating the team and will possibly betray them. So, Yelena is going to join the team to keep an eye on Val and her mission. Who are they? John Walker was an army captain who, after the disappearance of Steve Rogers and the abdication by Sam Wilson, took on the mantle of Captain America. He was very bad at it. But after Walker came into the possession of a vial of super soldier serum, he took the serum and gained superhuman powers. Then he committed a war crime and was fired from being Captain America. But Walker built his own shield and joined the fight against the Flag Smashers and got a little redemption arc that I believe was completely unearned and utterly pointless. Walker was then recruited by Val to take on the mantle of US agent. What can they do? Walker is an accomplished army captain with expertise in leadership and is also pretty good at throwing that shield. On top of that, the super soldier serum gives Walker the ability to jump higher, punch harder, and rage ragier than your average man. Why are they on the team? John Walker wants another shot to prove himself. So John Walker takes the invitation from Val as an opportunity to save the day and prove he's a good guy. So those are my eight. And only Zemo, Ghost, Hammer, Screaming Mimi, Atlas, Yelena, and US Agent will be in the field. Mason will hang back and act as the team's mechanic. A couple of characters that I'd left out I'd like to explain myself. First, the team is usually envisioned with either Abomination or the Red Hulk acting as the team's heavy. Red Hulk is tricky for reasons that will become obvious later, and also Val seems to be doing everything we would expect Ross to do in a situation like this, being shady, recruiting anti-heroes, so I don't think we need him in charge. And also, as of recording this video, Abomination has appeared in two episodes of She-Hulk, and I would not be surprised if by the end of the series he was fully reformed and wouldn't really fit on a team like this. For that same reason, I'm also leaving out Titania, the Wrecking Crew, Leapfrog, and anyone else that shows up on She-Hulk. Not sure where they'll end up, so I'm going to ignore them for now. There are a couple of other living villains in the MCU. You've got Taskmaster from Black Widow. I do not see a reason to do anything else with that character as they were originally presented. And even if we threw them into this team, what would that add that we already do not have in Zemo, Walker, or Yelena? They're an acrobatic sword fighting brawler. Not exactly original in this lineup. I could see a world where Taskmaster joins a future team and this movie ends with Val revealing that she's finished working on a new operative with the Taskmaster chip implanted directly into his brain. No hardware needed. And he can lead the team in future missions. This can be Tony Masters, but I don't see a reason to rush it. Then you've got guys like Punisher, Elektra, Bullseye, and Luke Cage, who have all, I think, been on Thunderbolts teams in the comics and presumably exist in the MCU in some capacity. I don't love them being introduced here, and besides maybe Cage, I don't think any of them would bring anything new to this team. Punisher and Bullseye are sharpshooters, like Yelena and presumably Walker. Elektra is a ninja lady, much like Yelena. Cage is a heavy, which would add something special to the team. Power Man is also on the current incarnation of the Thunderbolts in the comics. You know what? Sorry Atlas, you're fired. Who are they? Luke Cage was experimented on during his stay in Seagate prison as the result of the experimentation he gained super strength and invulnerability, specifically in the form of bulletproof skin. He escaped prison and returned to Harlem where he feuded with a bunch of independently snake themed villains before becoming the head of organized crime in Harlem, unless he did not, it's unclear. He might have met Danny Rand, aka the mortal iron fist protector of Kun Lun, sworn enemy of the hand. He may have slept with Jessica Jones and then tried to kill her under mind control. He may have even joined up with those two and Daredevil to form the Defenders, although based on its reception, I'm pretty sure that one never happened. But the basic stuff, prisoner, experiments, bulletproof skin, Harlem, hero for hire. What can they do? Luke Cage has super strength and is bulletproof. He is also one of the more well-adjusted members of the team. And because of his possible connection to Danny Rand, Luke Cage might have a vague understanding of magic in this universe. Why are they on the team? Luke Cage is frequently in trouble with the law and someone like Val can lean on Cage in an attempt to get him to play ball. There is also something Luke Cage wants out of this, which we'll get to later. Other characters that are not on this team. Daredevil and Wong, the new brand ambassadors of the MCU. Any official Avengers, because Val does not want them to know this exists. Swordsman, although that would be hilarious. Moon Knight, who seems to be a free agent working outside the law. 
Val would probably see his disassociative identity disorder as well as the connection to an Egyptian god as too much of a liability. Bucky. I don't think we really need him with Zemo and Walker on the team. Plus, I don't think he would trust Val. And that's all I can think of. So what is the meat of this movie? The Thunderbolts, Baron Zemo, US Agent, Ghost, Yelena, Screaming Mimi, Tinkerer, Justin Hammer, and Luke Cage need to track down Creel and Stearns before they get to wherever it is they're going. But the heart of the movie is about Zemo learning to respect these metahumans and the rest of them getting over their individual hangups and working as a team. Here are some quick character arcs. Walker hates Zemo and does not want to work with someone he deems a villain. John needs to get over himself. Ghost does not trust people after she was betrayed by S.H.I.E.L.D. and then during the snip, what I call the five years between the snap and the blip. She was forced to take care of herself when Bill Foster and all of the Ant-Man team was snapped, so she needs to learn to trust the Thunderbolts because they're not all bad. Hammer needs to come to terms with the fact that he is not very good at being Tony Stark and forge his own identity. Screaming Mimi is afraid to use her powers because they're dangerous, so she needs to learn to accept help from the team, specifically Mason, who can help her control her voice with a special harness he builds, and she can lean into being a superhero. Mason has always been used by guys like Vulture. He needs to be less of a pushover and take care of himself. Yelena does not want to find another family after what happened to the last one, but she's got to learn to be less of a free agent and specifically become friends with Ghost. Luke Cage is a fun one because it's like, what's he even doing here? Well, you will learn that even though it seemed like he's found inner peace, there was always one thing Luke could not get over. Luke always wanted revenge on the guy who caused the fight that destroyed Harlem. People he knew died in that fight, and he wasn't there to help them because he was in prison. So that guilt has always weighed on Luke, but there really wasn't anything that Cage could do with it. Val explains that Stearns was partially responsible and he's on the loose, so Cage jumps at the opportunity to bring him down. And Luke needs to learn to stop blaming himself and spare Stearns. One other fun part of a Thunderbolt story is the idea that these guys need to sneak around. After all, they are being led by a famous supervillain, Baron Zemo. Justin Hammer almost destroyed part of Queens. We will find out that Screaming Mimi killed some people. Ghost is an international terrorist. Mason was connected to Vulture. Really, the only two that are not straight up villains are US Agent and Luke Cage, although public opinion on both is pretty mixed. I think Yelena is cool, although she did beat up Hawkeye on Christmas in the middle of 30 Rock, and people seem to like Hawkeye, so like maybe people don't like her either. But it's pretty difficult for a team like that to blend in, so they do it by not blending in. They're going to need to fight a supervillain, so what better disguises for him than as superheroes? So this is that scene. The team is assembled for the first time. Walker is dressed like the US agent, everyone else is in street clothes. Walker sees Zemo. You. Nice to see you, John. Interesting costume. Are you Captain Yemen now? I'm the US agent, and I outrank you. I'm in charge here. No, you're not. Zemo is. You will be taking orders from him for the duration of this mission. After that, you're all free to go. And what's stopping us from leaving now? Well, you could try. But we know where you are, and we know where you'll go. So it's back on the run. Getting out is not the hard part, especially for you. It's getting back home without getting arrested and putting everyone you love in jeopardy. The only way you get this pardon is if you do exactly what he says. No buts. Understood. What's the plan? We know Stearns and Creel are making their way towards an abandoned S.H.I.E.L.D. base, but the problem is nobody knows where it is, except Ross. So we need to track them down and get to the base before they do whatever it is they're going to do. I've got a question. How are we going to do that? Our faces have been on every TV, phone, and gas pump in the world. We can't just sneak around, or at least you guys can't. No, as criminals we cannot. But costumed vigilantes are afforded certain privileges these days that we can exploit. You're saying we're going to pretend to be heroes? That's right, I believe this was Mr. Hammer's idea. Thanks, Barry. Yeah, so I've taken the liberty, branding guru that I am, of inventing new superhero personas for everybody. Mr. Black and White and Red all over is good as is, since nobody's seen him in that before. I'm going to use my new world-class titanium man armor. I'm thinking for Mason over here we call you Techno. I've got a suit all worked out, it's really cool, even got an eye patch. Awesome. Damn right. Screaming Mimi. As much as I love the riot girl thing, it doesn't scream good guy. Don't blame me, blame society. This guy gets it. Anyway, I'm thinking we tone down the screaming and turn it into singing, huh? 
You got a bunch of bird themed guys already, but I like Songbird for you. Luke, Mr. Cage, two words, power, man, enough said. You, Little Miss Romanov, this one's easy. People already like your sister, let's not overthink it. White Widow. And then we've got you two. This was tricky. Ghost. So, we had to drop the ghost aesthetic, which left me without a lot of options. I'm thinking we do a night thing. What about Miss Moon? And then Zemo. I wanted something that says, I am not Baron Zemo. So I'm thinking, who is the least Baron Zemo person there is? I don't know if you guys remember him, but back in the day, after Rogers disappeared, there were a lot of short-lived copycats. And one of them was named Citizen V. Flag for a cape, sword for some reason. Anyway, he got shot. But people come back all the time. Maybe you're his grandson. I don't know. Point is, Citizen V. Everybody cool? No. This is stupid. Zemo pulls Val aside. Do we really need to do this? The best way to go undercover these days is in a cape. Don't write it off so quickly. You might like it. I'm doubtful, but we don't have time. So everybody gets their silly names and we are doing both Thunderbolts. Antiheroes recruited by the government for Black Ops missions and... Zemo and a team of villains posing as heroes. It's the perfect middle ground and it gets to be so much fun. Only other thing I want in this pitch. So Val has been pretty cagey about the actual mission. What does the leader want with Ross and what's in the abandoned base? I've got one more scene. It comes about two thirds of the way through the movie. The Zemo and his team enter the base. Stearns walks out to greet them. They sent superheroes. Wow, not sure who any of you are, but I appreciate the gesture. This must really mean it's here. You're crazy. What's here? Oh, they didn't tell you? It's actually a funny story. You see, this one, he was part of a secret program to test the limits of gamma radiation. Totally off the books, wouldn't want the Russians finding out. He recruited a young scientist named Bruce Banner who figured it out, cracked the code, and made something for Ross. Called it the Gamma Bomb. I'm sure you know the rest of the story. Accident turns Banner into the Jade Giant, the program is deemed too dangerous, and it's all destroyed. Except, Old Thunderbolt just could not let it go, so he kept the bomb, hid it from everyone in an abandoned base where no one would think to look. But a while ago, when Ross was making a visit to our little clubhouse, I got a look at his brain, and I saw it. I knew this was it, the key to unlocking our DNA, giving us the tools of gods to cure every disease, solve every problem, make more hulks. Have you seen him? Like actually seen Banner in action? It's magnificent. Imagine a world of hulks. We conquer the galaxy, and only I can do it. Lead us into a new age. And what luck, he kept the bomb. So I'm really sorry, but I cannot let you ruin this. So I'm pretty sure this is more fun as a reveal later in the movie. But the leader is after the Gamma Bomb. The original experiment that turned Bruce Banner into the Hulk. That's why they can't call the Avengers. The Hulk can't know the government still has the Gamma Bomb. And the leader wants to use the Gamma Bomb to reverse engineer the Hulk and create his own. And that's the pitch. The Thunderbolts come together, track down Stearns, and save Ross. And they do save Ross, even though he is exposed to a dangerous amount of gamma radiation. Maybe something to look into in a post credit scene. Either way, this is the Thunderbolts movie we need. The one we deserve. The one with Justin Hammer. And I cannot wait for you to announce this exact pitch in a couple of days at D23. Unless I accidentally upload this video too, and you need to pick a different team, but... You know, that's not going to happen. Also, Kevin, got to give a huge thank you to this video sponsor, NordVPN. Like Kevin, say you want to watch The Incredible Hulk, but you can't find it on Netflix. You can use a VPN to access other countries' streaming libraries. But that's not all VPNs are good for. Basically, a VPN routes your information through an encrypted tunnel, so you're safe from hackers and any services that track you. Like, I don't know, say you're on the run from a general obsessed with killing you or stealing your blood or whatever. You're going to want a VPN, and honestly, he was probably using one. If only there was a VPN for not spilling your blood in a soda, then things would be different. And even when you're not using the VPN, Nord gives you threat protection, so you can keep out things like malware, tracking cookies, and ads. And it doesn't slow you down. I'll be honest, before I started using a VPN, I was like, well, obviously this is going to make my internet slower, so why would I use that? But it's a fast connection wherever you are. I have been using NordVPN for years. It's great. Honestly, I'm a big fan. So if you want to check it out, go to NordVPN.com slash NandoVMovies to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So as always, I've got to give a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel on Patreon. 
everybody who watches my videos on Nebula, everybody who listens to my podcast, mostly nitpicking, and everybody that follows me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. Nando V Movies on all those platforms. That's all I got. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.